Hey, one of my students on Instagram sent me a message. His name is Wesley D. Passos 33. He said, teacher, my frustration with English is because I don't have people to practice English conversations with. And when I read that message, I realized there are so many other students just like Wesley and probably like you who are frustrated because they can't find an English study partner. Well, today's lesson is for you if that is your frustration. I want to teach you how to find the right English study partner and take your English to the next level. But before we start our lesson, I need you to do three things for me. I need you to like this video, share this video, and subscribe. Here we go. Like, share, subscribe. Come on. I said like, share, subscribe. Last time, like, share share, subscribe. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right. So why is it so hard to find an English partner? Number one, the reason why it's so hard to find an English speaking partner is no one around you speaks English. You know, I've had so many conversations with students from around the world and they've told me, teacher, I love English. I love learning English, but the only problem is there's no one around me, teacher. I live in a village where people are great and we have our mother tongue, but English is not spoken. So teacher, I only study with myself. Maybe that's the same problem that you're experiencing. No one around you in your immediate vicinity or area speaks English. Or maybe it's this reason why it's so hard to find an English speaking partner. Maybe because you don't know where to find other English learners. For example, yes, you're aware of the fact that no one in your area speaks English, but when you go online, the World Wide web, you get frustrated. You get overwhelmed because yes, there are millions of websites, but which one is going to help you find your English speaking partner? So this can be a big source of frustration for you as an English learner, or maybe the reason why it's so hard to find an English speaking partner for you is because you are too shy to ask other people to study with you. I've had so many awesome students over my time as a teacher, over the years and years of me teaching English. And among those students, I've had many who were shy, too shy to ask other people for help and also too shy to ask someone to study with them. So maybe that's the same for you. Maybe you really want to improve your English. You want a study partner, but you're too shy to ask someone. Even in the comment section, you feel like, ooh, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want someone to say, no, don't ask me that question. That can be a big reason for why you're not able to find a study partner. Now, the thing is, you don't just want any study partner. You don't just want anyone who's studying English. There are certain characteristics that you actually should look for in a speaking partner. So let's take a look at those characteristics. All right. So what are three things you should look for in an English partner? Number one is right here. The first characteristic is look for someone who has the same English level. This is so important. If you are an advanced English learner, you should not study with a beginner English learner. Why? Because they're not going to help you improve. Yes, they will benefit from you, but you need to improve. You need to practice what you're learning. So you need to figure out how to find someone who is at the same level you are. Someone who loves English, but also has been studying for the same amount of time you have been studying. All right. Now the second characteristic is also very important. You need to look for someone who is interested in the same topics, man. I can't emphasize this enough. The thing is when you're studying English, you have to remember it's not just about words or expressions. No, it's also about the information. You see, you're going to speak English and I'm sure you can speak English right now, but you're going to talk about things you are already interested in. 
And I've mentioned this before. In your own language, what do you talk about? Do you like sports? Do you like politics? Do you like art? Do you like music? What do you like to actually read about, talk about, or think about in your own language? You see, those are the topics that you're going to want to talk about in English. So if you find a partner who has similar interests, man, oh man, it's going to help you so much because you will enjoy speaking with your partner. Does that make sense? All right, so find someone who is interested in the same topics. And the third characteristic when you're looking for an English study partner is look for someone who desires the same study schedule. You see, I've had students over the years. Some students are able to study every single day, every single day, maybe for an hour every day. Maybe their schedule just allows them the ability to study for an hour every day. But then I have other students married full-time jobs and they're extremely busy. So they're only able to study for a short period every day or even two or three times a week. So you need to find someone who not only what has the same level as you, not only is interested in the same topics as you are, but also desires the same study schedule. If you want to study three times a week, find someone who's like, yes, I am ready to study Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Find someone who wants to study with the same frequency that you want to study. Now, this is very, very important, but where do you find these individuals? I'm so glad you asked. So there are five different places that I want to tell you about five places to find an English study partner right now. Now, here are examples of online sites and groups where you can find an English partner. The first one is Facebook groups for English learners. I cannot tell you how awesome and how amazing Facebook English groups are. You see, there are thousands and I want to say millions of students on Facebook and they're following teachers like myself. And they're also following other individuals who provide English resources and they're all together in a group. Now, what you can do is join one of these Facebook groups. They're so easy to find and they're free. Join the Facebook groups, enjoy the resources that are provided and, and follow along. But then you'll start to realize, wait a minute, there are people commenting on these resources or there's a way for me to actually get in contact with the individuals who are also participating in this group. So Facebook groups are amazing because they show you other students excited and ready and willing to improve their English. All right. So Facebook English groups, number two, in the comment section underneath YouTube videos. That's right. This video right here. I told you all this several months ago and so many of you have actually started to put it into practice and I'm so proud of you. Underneath this video, type in the comment section, hey guys, my name is dot 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 and I would love to improve my English and I'm looking for a partner who is ready to take their English to the next level. Who wants to be my partner? And you'll be surprised by how many individuals are also looking for partners. So in the comment section underneath English video lessons, ask people, Hey guys, um, I want to study English. Do you want to study with me? Very simple. Not just my videos, other amazing English teachers on YouTube comment underneath their videos as well. People that are commenting under these videos are individuals who are already excited to study English. Those are the individuals you need to study with and find them so that they can be your English study partner, your English speaking partner. All right. Number three, number three is Instagram comment section. Now you all know that I have an Instagram account. Some of you may not follow me just yet, but let me, let me show you real quick. And as I'm opening my Instagram account, I want to explain to you what I mean by Instagram comment section. You see what happens on Instagram is individuals find channels that offer English lessons. Again, I'll show you mine. This is mine. Can you guys see it? There you go. Boop, boop. I have a lot of videos on my Instagram account. Again, it's speak English with Tiffany. 
And underneath each video, students comment. Well, comment there. Hey guys, I loved this video. Does anybody want to practice with me? That's all you have to do. You can find a partner. Just be brave, step out there, and write it in the comment section. Hey guys, does anyone want to practice with me? And you'll be surprised how many individuals respond. Just keep trying, keep trying. All right, so Instagram comment section. Next, you can try number four, Lang8 website for language learners. When I say this site is amazing, it's lang8.com, L-A-N-G-8 dot com an awesome site i used the website when i was studying korean yes it's awesome it's basically a group of learners language learners from around the world willing to help each other for example when i was learning korean someone would check my korean writing and i would help somebody else by correcting their english essays or their english paragraphs everything was free so in those groups, you can find someone who's also interested in practicing English. Like, hey guys, I noticed that um, Michael and Samantha, you're, you're very active. Would you guys like to study with me? That's all you have to do, all right? And now number five, another area or place you can find a language learner or language partner. Hi Native app for language learners. Another great app. Students that are already following me have told me how much they love this app. Again, I used the app and I still use it sometimes to help me with some Korean expressions. H-I, like hi, and native, N-A-T-I-V-E app, hi native app. On this app, you can also find language partners. All you have to do is ask. Now you're probably saying, teacher, man, thanks so much for all of these websites and groups, but teacher, how do I really ask someone? How do I present myself? I'm so glad you asked. Let's look at a real example, all right? So let's go to a real situation and how to organize your thoughts. So here's the deal right here. On Facebook, specific group. Again, there are hundreds of groups on Facebook. Number two, a picture and a message. Remember to show people who you are and say a little bit about yourself. Think about it, people wanna connect with you. So if you just ask a question but there's no picture, they may be a little bit apprehensive, like is this a real person or a robot, right? So have a picture and also tell them something about yourself. And then remember as well to make your request. Make it clear and don't be shy. There's an expression in English, closed mouths don't get fed. And it basically means if you don't open your mouth, nothing will happen. If you want a partner, come on, be brave, be courageous and ask. You'll be surprised how many people will respond. All right. So let's look at this again. How can we actually write this out? So who? Let's say his name is Peter, an intermediate English learner from Spain. What? He's looking for a speaking partner to practice English with. When? Two times a week. Remember I said it's very important to let people know how often you would like to study, all right? So he said two times a week. Next, where? Skype, Zoom, or WhatsApp, and why? I want to get a better job, so I need to improve my English. All right, so who, what, when, where, and why? All of the W's have been answered, and we have organized our thoughts. And now Peter is going to put a message on a Facebook group or in a Facebook group to ask if someone wants to study with him. So here we go. This is how Peter can write it. Hey everyone, my name is Peter. I am an intermediate English learner and I live in Spain. I have been studying English for a few years, but now I really want to get a better job. You see how already we're kind of familiar with Peter, like, oh, okay, hey Peter, what's going on? You're from Spain, all right. He continues. So I need to improve my English. I am looking for a speaking partner to practice with two times a week. I can meet via Skype, Zoom, or WhatsApp. Would anyone like to practice with me and improve their English too? Very clear, very clear, easy to understand. We know a little bit about Peter. He's from Spain. He's an intermediate English learner. He's been speaking English for a few years. He's looking for a partner. He wants to practice two times a week via Skype, Zoom, or WhatsApp. All of that information because he organized his thoughts. So P 
Peter may get more people attracted to him because they know exactly what he wants, how many times he wants to practice a week, and also they know his level. You can do the same thing. This is how you find an English study partner. Guys, I really hope this lesson helped you. I totally understand your frustrations when you're trying to find a partner. I experienced the exact same thing when I was studying Korean. And I'm hoping this lesson helped you and helps to remove that frustration. I believe in you. I know you can do it. Again, remember, one of the ways is to type in the comment section. Ask people if they want to be your partner. I want to challenge you to do that. Find a partner, practice what you learn, and you will continue to improve. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I loved teaching you. I can't wait to talk to you next week. But as always, remember to speak English. You know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right, guys. So today's story time is actually something very interesting about Korean culture. So you all know I lived there for 10 years. You know I call it my second home because I love Korea. But there was one thing about Korean culture that utterly shocked me. So being American, you know, I lived in America my entire life. My ideas about certain things were all based on American culture. So I remember the first time when I was studying at a cafe, my friend and I, she was Korean. We were going to a cafe and we actually went to Starbucks. We went to the Starbucks. I love studying at Starbucks. And even to this day, I love working at Starbucks. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I can't, but Starbucks is my go-to place, the place I like to go to. We say go-to place. So we went to Starbucks. I had my computer. You know, I was very studious, someone that enjoys studying and learning. Had my computer, had my books, had my bag. I was ready to study. My friend the same. She was studying English, very intelligent. So we sat down at the Starbucks and we were studying. We had been there for about maybe an hour and a half or two hours. You know, we had gotten our snacks, had our drinks and maybe a muffin. But you know, after an hour and a half or two hours of studying, really focused studying, you drunk, you drank something. It was delicious. It was delicious. But all that liquid has to go somewhere. So my bladder was starting to get full. My bladder was like, doot, doot. Hey, Tiff. Um, we're going to need to empty soon. So I realized, Ooh, I have to use the bathroom. Here's where the problem was. Remember I said I had my computer, I had my books, I had my bag, which included my wallet, all of my personal belongings. And my friend was sitting there as well. She said, Oh, tip, I have to use the bathroom too. Cause I mentioned, I said, Ooh, I have to use the restroom. Now I was okay. If with leaving my stuff there while my friend was sitting there, because I trust her. And I was going to get up and go to the bathroom. She said, no, let's go to the bathroom together. I said, but our stuff is here, like my computer, my bag. So I was proceeding to put my computer in my bag, take my wallet, put it in my bag. And I was a little concerned because someone's going to take our seat. But she looked at me and she said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm packing my bag so that we can go to the bathroom because we can't leave our stuff here. She said, yes, we can. I said, uh, no, we can't. Again, remember American culture. So I said, well, no, it's not safe to leave our stuff here and somebody can take it. She said, oh, no, things are different in Korea. She said, you can leave your stuff here. No one's going to bother it. Now I was very apprehensive, guys. I said, uh, she said, Tiff, trust me. So we went to the bathroom. I was very, very apprehensive, went to the bathroom, you know, use the bathroom. And of course, as females, we talked in the bathroom for a little while. We came back out. Of course, the stuff was there. She said, yeah, Tiff, nobody bothers your stuff. She said, well, one of the reasons is because CCTV. So CCTV is what they call the surveillance system in Korea. And the cameras are everywhere. I mean, literally outside on the streets, wherever you go, there are cameras. 
So you're always being watched. She said, well, that's one of the reasons people are really deterred from stealing because you're always being watched. She said the second reason is Koreans are just really honest people. Now there are always exceptions to the rule, but in general, people do not bother your stuff. So that was my first kind of situation. So I said, okay. So the next time I said, well, let me see how this really works. I was by myself. I left my stuff. I said, well, let me go to the bathroom. Went to the bathroom. I looked back. Stuff was still there. I said, well, let me go get a drink from downstairs. So I walked downstairs because I was upstairs studying. I said, Lord, please let my stuff be there. Walked downstairs, ordered my drink, stayed down for a few minutes, walked back upstairs. Wouldn't you know, my things were still there. I said, okay. So the next time, now the next time I was actually in a library and I was studying at the library and I said, okay, I have my computer. It's a lot to try to pack everything up. I said, I'm hungry though. I need to go downstairs to the cafeteria. To go to the cafeteria, order food, bring it back, would take at least 20 or 30 minutes. I said, well, let me try it. And my stuff was still there after going, ordering food, eating some of the food, coming back upstairs 30 minutes later. No one had touched my stuff. Now, again, like I said, there are exceptions to the rule, but I was so shocked by the honesty and how people really don't touch your stuff in Korea. So it was something brand new to me, but it was so refreshing. And for my Japanese students watching, I've also heard from other friends that Japan is even better. Japanese people will not touch your stuff. I heard that if you leave your wallet on a train, it will be there if you come back an hour later, if you miss the train and you have to go back on that same train. So I really appreciated the honesty and it was something very interesting that is really a part of the culture of South Korea. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm curious to know more about your culture. Is your culture like that where people don't touch anyone else's things? They kind of are honest and also the surveillance camera situation. Do you all have that in your country? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. I will talk to you next week. But as always, remember to speak English.